Right, let's get into this one straight away. Vehicles overheating. I've outlined a methodical test plan at the start of the video and we're going to do a few basic non-evasive checks starting with the fan hub test. This particular test is used to test the functionality of the fan clutch. The friction of the fan clutch and the ability of the fan clutch to slip is checked. This is indicated as a maximum allowed fan slip deviation. The fan slip deviation is based on the difference between the expected fan slip and the actual fan slip, which the maximum permissible value is 15% and this is 4.9%. So it's a pass. Moving on to the next test, which is evaluating the coolant pump. This procedure is used to test the functionality of the coolant pump. The ability of the coolant pump to reach certain speeds in a given amount of time as the water pump is an electronically controlled two-speed unit. This water pump passed its evaluation test as well as the fan hub. This means that we need to get more invasive. So I get the coolant out of the vehicle and start removing the thermostat housing from the offside front of the engine. which, despite having drained the engine of coolant, the thermostat was still holding a lot of coolant in the top hose, as you can see. Please could you take some time to give this video a like, as it not only tells me, but YouTube, that it's a good video and more people should see it. And if you're not subscribed, what are you waiting for? With the thermostat housing off, we can pry the stat out and take a look. For the price of a new thermostat, we will be fitting a new one anyway, as the seal is compromised. The most important part of this thermostat replacement process is that this seal also gets changed as you'll continue to have temperature issues even with a new thermostat if you don't change it. I'm applying lubricant to the seal and the thermostat for fitment. As you can see it's a very tight fit back into the thermostat housing. With that refitted and the other gaskets changed, we can refit the thermostat housing. It's only 6 bolts and a jubilee clip, so it should take you about 45 minutes. Then it's time to get the coolant back into the vehicle. I'm taking the front grill off as one, it's dead easy, and two, it allows me to do a better job of cleaning the radiator out. I've upped the RPM of the engine to 1200 and I've taken what components I can off to allow me to steam the radiator. I'm hoping the increased RPM will draw the water through the radiator better. Once I'd completed this steam clean, I've refitted the grill and plugged the Davy in to monitor the coolant pump speed, coolant temperature and fan engagement for the road test. I was then able to road test the vehicle and confirm that the repair was completed and no more overheating DTCs were occurring. 